All right. How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Wednesday, Wednesday morning, December 4th, 2024 is the date. 9.38 a.m. California time here. Latest activity shows some movement uh, in Texas. Also, West Coast out here lighten up. Be ready. Looks like we got a broad scale event uh, all across the West Coast starting to kick off here. A lot of earthquake activity coming in uh, early this morning and just now. Missy Mimi's felt this earthquake here just outside of Willows, a 3.3 earthquake. We're out here just outside of Willows in the Chico area here in Northern California. Uh, I did not feel this earthquake. Of course, I was out doing some stuff here, moving around. Uh, but Missy Mimi's here in the living room, felt it, and felt like a little jolt. And the birds here, our parakeets, started acting crazy about that time as well. So we got some movement stirring up here outside of Willows. Uh, 2.7 was prior to this 3.3. Somewhat deep as well. That has a lot to do with the strain out here across the west coast a lot of movement also here at the southern end of the cascadia subduction zone where we're seeing uh, some elevated movement as well uh, just after midnight of 1.9 southern end of the cascadia and then we started getting some movement here across this plate boundary which is the uh, juan de fuca plate and the pacific plate boundary and then another earthquake uh, in that same region followed up a few minutes later by some adjustment back over here across the southern end of the Cascadia mega thrust area so a lot going on out here today on a broad scale even some movement up into Washington with a two-pointer all across the west coast uh, this is a, a pure sign of strain out here against the plate boundary so be on guard a lot of movement stretching up here from the Garlock fault shear zone there in Southern California all the way up here across this mountain range through Utah Things are uh, definitely on the uptick out here in the last 24 hours. Uh, so we got to, you know, just be on guard here. These little earthquakes give us a friendly reminder here that we live in earthquake country. Even though, um, you know, there's, I don't think there's any surface faults here um, directly underneath this region. More so across the west side of the valley. Uh, there's a Great Valley Thrust, or the Thrust, Great Valley Thrust Fault here on the west side of the Sacramento Valley. And, um, that can see some earthquake activity on occasion, but this is relatively deep, about 15, 17 miles deep underneath this area. And I think it has a lot to do with the Cascadia subduction zone over here. Um, a portion of it does extend underneath Northern California. Uh, it is a major subduction zone. Let me show you guys what I'm talking about here. Let's go over to the trimmer map. Uh, in fact, yesterday we seen some elevated trimmer down here across Northern California. Uh, okay, so if you look on the map here, these show a whole bunch of little red dots. Now, these are not earthquakes, but trimmer counts, and they're not at the surface level. They are downstream of the subduction zone. Here's the subduction zone. The further right you go here on the map, uh, the deeper it would be in a sliced image, if you can think there in your mind. I do have a, a couple images here, but I'd ha I don't have them pulled up right now. So what's going on is we're getting that trimmer downstream here into the deeper areas of the Cascadia, adding strain, stress, not only upstream here, uh, where we've seen that uh, bouncing back and forth of earthquake activity here recently, but also it looks like we're seeing some deeper, um, but in this case, I guess it would be more shallow adjustment here across the Sacramento Valley. This trimmer activity occurs 35 to 45 kilometers deep into the subduction zone. Uh, this activity this morning outside the Willows area, a little bit uh, in a little odd area, a little bit more south than, than I would expect the subduction zone to be. But I think it's all just got to do with right now the strain out here across this plate boundary. And not only there, as I mentioned, but up up all along the coastline there in the Washington and the Cascades there, uh, also down in the Southern California. Things are lighting up all over the place here. Today's one of those days you have to be on guard because whenever there's elevated earthquake activity like this, one, um, well, it's common sense, the higher possibility percentage that we could see a bigger quake out here with all this elevated movement going on. Uh, all this stuff is not relieving strain out here. If anything, this tells us, hey, be on guard. Gives us little hints here of what's moving. And right now it looks like the entire West Coast is uh, moving out here. 
So we got those two earthquakes here this morning within minutes of each other, 2.7, 3.3 underneath the uh, Glen County area outside of Willows. Fairly deep, not surface adjustment, but strain. You know, I believe it's strain overall with an overall pattern here, a primary focus of the subduction zone here offshore. And it does extend somewhat underneath this area. And a way to find out, see how far it goes down, is by just looking here at past trimmer events. We can pull up past year and a half, almost two years, and I'll show you guys how far south it goes down here underneath Northern California. Just about, well, here's Chico. Glen County's right here. The earthquakes were right about here this morning. So that trimmer, this is a lot of trimmer, of course, here in the last couple of years. You can see where the Cascadia subduction zone sits, at least far as the trimmer goes. The locked area where the strain is building is offshore for the uh, 9.0. Uh, but it does extend there underneath Northern California distance. Um, you know, not again, we don't see any trimmer count there underneath Glen County, but we're definitely getting some earthquake activity, and it's related to all the strain out here on the Cascadia right now. Uh, one earthquake up there around Mount Rainier as well, 2.0. Very shallow earthquake. Uh, let's go see what's going on up there at that volcano. I, I think it's strain-related, stress-related. Looks like it's on the northern flank there of that volcano. If that's even a legit earthquake, I'd, we'll have to check and see. Yeah, there it is. So very localized there for Mount Rainier. It looks like there was another earthquake as well in that, uh, in this image here. It looks like five, six hours ago, a little smaller one. Let's see here. USGS only reporting one of the quakes here from today. This other small little microquake is actually from yesterday. So one earthquake missing, one earthquake showing up here, a little 2.0. Some movement around Mount St. Helens as well. Again, overall seismic elevated pattern out here taking place today. Yesterday, a lot of movement across the Calaveras Fault Zone. Let's take a look here at the 2.5 map and above, see what we've had so far today. A bunch of movement up north. Bootjack 2.8. That's on the eastern side here of the San Joaquin Valley. Yesterday, we had a 2.5 over here across the western side of the San Joaquin Valley. So overall, like I say, it's not just one area. It looks like the entire west coast out here is uh, getting ready to move. A lot of activity across this little triangle section of land. Uh, Garlock Fault Shear Zone down south here across the San Andreas Fault. This has shown some elevated seismic activity. Quite a few little microquakes out here in that region. Just let me know here that this, this plate boundary is quite strained if we get this inland activity like that. One earthquake here outside of the Ontario region, a 1.4. And also a little bit of activity here across the southern branch of the Brawley Seismic Zone here, it looks like. Uh, 1.6. No swarming going on there for now, but we'll definitely watch that because a lot of times we'll see some swarming kick off in that area. So I think the key word here today, folks, is be on guard uh, with all this activity. Literally from north to south here across northern California, inland. Got to remember these inland earthquakes here are a sign of strain across the plate boundary. That's where the, the secondary strain transfers from inland. And uh, that's what we're, from the plate boundary here. In this case, the San Andreas Fault here across California and the Cascadia Subduction Zone as well. A lot of inland earthquake activity today across California. You can follow that movement all the way up here across these this little mountain range through Utah, even all the way up into Yellowstone. Got a little pattern going on here of seismic uptick. Let's go see what's going on at Yellowstone real quick. I don't think we have too much going on there across that super volcano. Um, one little small spiky earthquake. That's probably a 0.9 or maybe a, a 1.0, but aside from that, the seismograph stations out there look pretty quiet. Uh, a bunch of movement there across Texas oil fields here today as well. New Madrid seismic zone uh, got hit, it looks like, yesterday. A little 1.8. This earthquake 
was not on the map last night during the update. So they added that earthquake there onto the uh, the earthquake catalog after the fact. Hawaii area. Uh, let's see here. A little bit of movement stirring up across the area of the Kilauea volcano and the deeper areas underneath Pahala today. And, uh, no major change going on here that I can see. Let's give a quick glance of the uh, latest status update here. Looks like this is put out uh, yesterday. Still sitting at a yellow in advisory. No uh, major change, although we have seen a little bit of elevated earthquake activity at the summit area of Kilauea in the last week. Of course, uh, inflation as well. That's an indicator of some, uh, you know, some magma accumulating underneath the area. I don't think we're going to see any uh, eruption near term. Uh, but if we look at the deformation charts here of the Kilauea volcano, I'll show you guys the past year right here. Each one of these lines here dropping is the eruption. A small one, not a bit, really no major eruptions there across Kilauea volcano, but a couple different regions seen uh, some fissure, eruptive fissure activity. Or last one back in uh, the end of September. So this is the inflation chart. This is going to go up, obviously, with inflation as it builds below. And we're at the level right now seen prior to our last uh, couple eruptions there this year. So we're right here, just about matching the previous two heightened areas of inflation. So we could see something uh, start to kick up in gear here. I think that's why we've seen a little bit of elevated earthquake activity here on a broad scale. Things are building and um you know it, it could be anywhere where we could see a magma intrusion out here so we'll continue to watch that uh the rest of the world out here in terms of larger scale movement a lot of this was from yesterday all these fives out here across the western pacific it looks like right now things are getting ready to to potentially move on the west coast so far today, 4.9, the largest quake down there in the South Sandwich Trench, the northern end. That's a major subduction zone there, seeing a little bit of activity. Let's take a look here at the Earthquake 3D globe, see what we got. Up here across the Aleutian Trench, some movement stirring up as well, 4.3. Oh, man, look at this super deep quake in underneath the Sea of Osk here. That's a 4.2 earthquake. Super deep, 278 miles deep here into this subduction zone. That's a Curl Kamchatka Trench, and uh, this one's capable of producing a mega quake. 9.0 that happened back in 2000, um, uh, was it 2011? The Japan earthquake, I believe it was 2011. That, uh, that was down here across the Japan Trench. This area, the Curl Kamchatka Trench here is... Uh, been quiet for a while and that's very capable of producing a mega quake in itself so we're watching that one a lot of deeper activity here underneath this subduction underneath this area into the subduction zone uh, just continues to add further strain across the locked area for the next big mega quake in that area big time uh, some fours here across the crunch zone roughly about uh, Japan through Taiwan southward in the Philippines. Nothing big going on there for now, but uh, got quite a few fours in that region. New Zealand, some threes there from last night, some older activity there into the Tonga Trench as well from yesterday. Uh, a little 5.3 off the coast here of Chile. That was from earlier this morning, I believe. That looks like it's already affecting the region here across the Peru Chile Trench for elevated activity. 4.3. This is a fracture zone out there between uh, the two plates. Stuff like that when we get earthquake activity here normally adds further strain across that subduction zone of the Chile region. So that uh, is already in place. The Atlantic Ocean pretty quiet. I think main focus right now could be California. I can see I didn't feel this earthquake. Um, if you did, let me know. Missy Mimi's here was just sitting down in the lounging in the chair, and um, felt like a. She said she felt a jolt. 
And then about that time, the birds here, a couple parakeets we have started acting a little crazy. Overall sign of stress out here across the West Coast, folks. It's not just one area. We're looking at areas north all the way down through the West Coast, Cascadia. I mean, it's pretty obvious here. We got a lot of uptick in earthquake activity. Uh, just in this map alone, 133 earthquakes in the last 24 hours, and things are increasing out here, it looks like. Quick glance here at the space weather activity. No major flares going on here. A little bit of in-flare activity last night, but overall that's uh, fairly weak. Not a whole lot uh, happening there across the sun right now. We do have a couple coronal holes that are uh, turning into view, the Earth-directed view here. Not squarely lined up with Earth, but it could uh, enhance the um, solar wind stream here in the coming days as that turns more into the Earth-directed view which would affect the three-day geomagnetic forecast once the arrival of that high-speed solar wind stream hits the Earth. We could see some aurora activity, but uh, nothing in the forecast there for now. Flare threat still remains uh, minor. Not a whole lot going on there. Uh, look at the UV filter. does show an active region out here on the eastern limb. Uh, really not expecting too much from that for now. Uh, we'll have to keep an eye on it, though, see if anything changes with that new sunspot out there on the eastern limb. Uh, storm Prediction Center for severe weather. Nothing showing up there across the maps. Just general thunderstorm activity. Here's a look at the computer generated forecast models here for the next few days. Lots more snow coming in here across the Great Lakes area in the northeast. So get used to it. Big blast of cold air coming in as we head towards the end of the week. And after that, a uh, little pattern change out here. Looks like high pressure going to zoom in here across the east, bringing in some moisture in a counter in a uh, clockwise direction here. That high pressure is a lot of moisture coming in from the Gulf, adding to the rain, adding some rainfall out here across the southeast areas. Another low pressure system up here as we head into early next week. Uh, for California, oh goodness, maybe all oh, this looks promising, hopefully. Get a little pattern change at the end of next week here with some uh, rain coming back into the area, hopefully. That would be nice. We need some more rainfall, so we'll see how all that plays out. All right, folks. Um, yeah, I'm just going to continue to watch things here on my end. A uh, little earthquake there in China Lake. Go back here to the map. China Lake area down in Southern California here. That not showing up on the USGS map. There's, a, again, a little earthquake right here. Very small one. No elevated activity across Southern California yet. I mean, it's in terms of larger scale movement. There's a lot of microquake activity still indicating strain out here. Um, and in general, all across the West Coast. Uh, even another earthquake coming in right now as I've been doing the update in the last few minutes right on the creeping segment of the San Andreas Fault. So we know we got movement out here. Strain building. Plates are moving. The plate is moving. And the uh, various fault systems out here inland are showing the strain between the plate boundaries out here. So just be on guard. We'll be out here covering anything if uh, anything does pop up in terms of larger scale potential right now. Just stay safe. Have an earthquake plan, and we will see you guys back out here a little bit later on today.